I'm so thrilled to be here today with Bruce Kelly, SVP and CTO at NetScout. Bruce, thank you so much for being here. Good morning, Diana, and happy Friday. Happy Friday. Uh, So 5G introduced complex network technology, which I know created some visibility challenges in the network. So why was it important to get visibility back? And how did you go about doing that? As we all know, 5G is really not about cell phones, right? It's about enterprises. And so visibility is going to be even more critical. Like a human complaining about a drop call, they they redial. But when you're on a manufacturing floor, you're in a bank or healthcare, that's not going to cut it. Right. And so when you look, um, 5G, obviously low latency, high throughput, lots of services and all the verticals. But there's a paradigm shift that went on. Right. And it's 4G versus 5G is very different. It's I, I, I use an analogy. It's like changing all the wheels of the car. And what does that really mean? Uh, what it means is that cloud migration happened. Right. So you were in a physical world with traffic going north, south, in and out of boxes. Now you're in the cloud. Um, and so. At the same time, they went to edge computing. It was centralized. Now it's 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 out at the edge, more places. And the third thing is, when you move to 5G, because it's banks and hospitals and all that, they secure the environment. They turn on encryption. So all of these things are great, but they create challenges or new barriers. And those barriers are things were going north, south, in and out of boxes. And now they're in the cloud going east, west. And so observability products, and security products now go blind, whereas in 4G, they could see everything, north, south. And so NetScout took a leadership role and worked with all the equipment manufacturers. This would be the Nokias, the Ericsons, the Mavineers, and so on, to make sure that you had access to east-west traffic in an encrypted world. And so we worked on what's called virtual tapping, which allows us to get a packet 7 by 24 always on. And we used our experience to make sure that the quality of those taps was very high. And so the bottom line right now is the tools won't go blind. We spent two and a half years on this in, in observability or visibility or securing this 5G environment is now possible. It seems like an important thing because one thing we know about 5G is that it kind of enables the connected world and the Internet of Things. That means uh, from a security standpoint, there are thousands of more endpoints that need to be secured. So talk to me a little bit about how you see observability and security changing in such a complex environment. The first thing is the goal is still the same for the carrier, right? It's about an awesome customer experience. So whether it's on the old or the new cloud, does does it really matter? Um, But what's changing is when you go to the connected world, it's going to be millions or hundreds of millions of things. And so not like humans calling, complaining when I'm driving in my car and I got a drop call and it's a bad experience and they can fix it. You're going to need AIML. You're going to need automation. You're going to need to be watching all the time, millions and millions of things. So it the, the paradigm shift really is automation and AIML is a must if you're going to be able to offer SLAs, five nines, high quality to these, these enterprises. So I hear you talking about AI and ML, but I'm wondering if you can expand a little bit on how operators are leveraging automation and observability for security purposes, as well as, um, I'm wondering if you can expand also on um, what CSPs need for that approach. There's a lot of hype when you kind of look at the AIML world and you got to separate out hype from reality of where it is. But really to me, it's a simple two-step process. One is the quality of the data, right? So the AIML and the automations, it's I call it garbage in, garbage out, right? So in, in, in the AI world, um, machine learning world, they call this hallucinations. You basically ask it to something and it comes back with the wrong answer. And so that's where NetScout shines. We, we've always been basing our data on packets. Packets, when you look at the carriers, they can have a problem with the handset vendors, the cell towers, the, the servers that are you know, from Nokia and Ericsson in the middle. So there's a lot, of, a lot of places where things can fail. And so you need layer two through seven visibility. And that's what packets do. And then NetScout with scalable DPI takes those packets and generates high quality metadata. I call it AI ready metadata. And so that's step one is you need good data. And then step two is you need automation, AI, ML, all these breakthroughs that are happening to really assure and secure the network. And so those are really the the two biggest things is you need to design in visibility day one, not an afterthought. Right. And then the quality of the data and, and the packet data is the richest source 
of information, and then then you apply all the techniques that that are uh, coming with AI and ML today. So you talked earlier a little bit about the paradigm shift that happened with 5G and the cloud and the shift from north-south to east-west. Talk to me for a quick second about the differences in the automation architecture and the approach from 4G to 5G. Um, And what is the current state of play and the the new approach to automation, what does that look like? I'll describe that uh, in a paradigm that people used used to. So if you looked at OSI, they have the seven layer model. If you look at IP, the four layer model. So it's layers. And I would start it simply at the bottom layer. And that's where you have new servers. And you hear companies like NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, uh, and whatnot. So the servers themselves have things called GPUs, right? Which are very friendly, as we all know, to AI. I'm sure you read it in the news. And then on top of that, you get cloud, and whether it's public cloud, private cloud, on-prem uh, is the second layer. And then the third layer would be all this open AI, meta, anthropic, it's the generative AI type technologies. And these are just the foundation. This isn't all the rave, this is here now. It's really the rave is the layer on top of that. And the layer on top of that, there's gonna be millions of what they call agents that are leveraging that generative AI stack with the hardware supporting it underneath. So there will be more agents than there are humans. And those agents, for example, could be healthcare agents. It could be a bot from a restaurant. It could be entertainment, banking, right? So that's what's happening is everybody in every vertical is gonna leverage AI in their domains. And it's no different when you look at security, which is what in our observability, which is what NetScout does, you need to work on that same stack. Right. So so the way that you're solving problems is changing. And and so it's very powerful. But if you're trying to do it the old way, you you won't keep up. Right. And so so this is the big shift that's going on uh, in the industry. And you have to be able to separate hype from reality on where it is. It's very promising, but it's there's still a ways to go. All right. Great place to leave it. Thank you so much. Thanks and have a great day.